Good morning, boys and girls. Today I'm going to read you the story called Wild About Bucks, and it's by Judy Sierra, and the pictures are by Mark Brown. Wild About Bucks. Let's see. It started the summer of 2002 when the Springfield librarian, Molly McGrew, by mistake drove her bookmobile into the zoo. Molly opened the door and she let down the stair, turned on the computer and sat in her chair. At first, all the animals watched from a distance, but Molly could conquer the strongest resistance. By reading aloud from the good Dr. Seuss, she quickly attracted a mink and a moose, a wombat, an aurax, a lemur, a lynx, eight elephant calves, and a family of skinks. In a flash, every beast in the zoo was stampeding to learn all about this new something called reading. Forsaking their niches, their nests, and their nooks, they went wildly, simply wildly, about wonderful books, choosing thin books and fat books and cat in the hat books and new books and true books and heaps of how-to books. Look at all those animals reading. All from the bookmobile. Giraffes wanted tall books and crickets craved small books while geckos could only read stick to the wall books. Oh, there comes Snuffles. Say hi, Mr. Snuffles. The pandas demanded more books in Chinese. Molly filled their requests, always eager to please. She even found waterproof books for the otter who never went swimming without Harry Potter. Look at Snuffles. You wanna be part of the Snuffs? <laughs> There's all the raccoons reading, and the llamas and the baboons. Raccoons read alone and baboons read in bunches and llamas read dramas while eating their lunches. Hyenas shared jokes with their red-bellied snakes and they howled and hissed till their funny bones ached. A tree kangaroo who adored Nancy Drew began solving mysteries right there at the zoo, such as why are the bandicoots books overdue? Let's see one more minute. Gently, Molly taught lessons in treating books right, for the boa constrictor squeezed Crichter too tight. Baby bunnies mucked up Goodnight Moon with their paws. Giant termites devoured the Wizard of Oz. And Bear's love of books was completely outrageous. They licked all the pi pictures right off of the pages.
Tasmanian devils found books so exciting that soon they had given up fighting for writing. They made up adventures so thrilling and new that the others decided to be authors too. Pythons wrote with their tails, penguins wrote with their bills, and porcupines wrote with their very own quills. Look at all of them now writing their own books. At the new insect zoo, bugs were scribbling haiku. The scorpion gave each a stinging review. That scorpion isn't very nice. As the cheetah's new novel began to take shape, he read chapters each night to the Barberry Ape. And although the gazelle couldn't spell very well like everyone else, she had stories to tell. Imagine the hippo's enormous surprise when her memoir was given the Zulit surprise. She looks like she's feeling very proud right now. What are they starting to build? With so many new books, Molly knew what to do. She hired 12 beavers, a stork and a new, to build a branch library there at the zoo. Then the animals cried, we can do it ourselves. We can check out the books. We can put them on shelves. And they did and they do up to this very day. Three cheers for the zoo brary. Hip, hip, hooray. Now they're going to have their own library at the zoo. When you visit the zoo now, you surely won't mind if the animals seem just a bit hard to find. They are snug in their niches, their nests and their nooks, going wild, simply wild about wonderful books. Could you imagine going to the zoo and seeing all the animals reading books? And that's the end. This book is for our favorite doctor, artist, poet, fun concocter, Theodore, Theodore Seuss Geisel, 1904 to 1991. And that's it, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed this book. Bye.